Welcome to the Jack Mountain Bushcraft Podcast, episode 118. Welcome to the Jack Mountain Bushcraft Podcast with your host, Jack Mountain Bushcraft School founder and master main guide, Tim Smith. I'm your host, Tim Smith. I'm a registered master main guide and have been a full-time outdoor instructor and guide since founding the Jack Mountain Bushcraft School in 1999. We help people become more skilled, more knowledgeable, more experienced, and more confident in the natural world through our bushcraft and guide training semester programs and multi-week canoe and snowshoe expeditions. You can check out the show notes to all of our podcasts at blog.jackmtn.com. If you're interested in learning more about our college-accredited and GI Bill-approved programs, visit the Jack Mountain Bushcraft School on the web at jackmtn.com. And check out our online network and digital learning academy at bushcraftschool.com. Hello and welcome back to the Jack Mountain Bushcraft Podcast. This is episode 118. Uh, I'm recording this on the morning of June 26th, 2023. It's early Monday morning and uh, we are just starting week four of the Wilderness Bushcraft semester. So last week we finished making canoe paddles and uh, got a couple of coats of uh, varnish on them. And this week we're going to get those things in the water. We've been out quite a bit polling lately. Um, but uh, haven't actually started paddling yet, so kind of looking forward to that. So I'm on my own here this morning and just have a couple of short things to talk about. Uh, number one is we're going to try a new format for the podcast, a little bit of experimentation. So up to this point, we've uh, mostly done episodes where there are two people and these are pretty easy to do they're kind of fun for us because you just kind of have a conversation and i've got this portable audio recorder we just kind of plop it in the middle record it and then the episode's done um these things again they're super easy to do the hard part with them is always scheduling so it's sometimes difficult to get people who are interested to uh to find the time to sit down. So for example, this morning, you know, recording this um, real early in the morning, uh, it would be hard to get somebody else to come in here this early and to get it done. Um, so our new format is I'm gonna try doing things where it's just me and the episodes will be quite a bit shorter and probably not as jokey and a little more focused on specific topics. So the hard thing, the downside of this is it's a little bit harder to pull off. You know, a conversation kind of flows naturally. You feed off of one another, uh, lots of fooling around, lots of jokes, lots of uh, uh, just general silliness. So uh, when you do a podcast by yourself, it's more like giving a speech. So you've kind of got to be much more uh, prepared. You've got to have your points outlined much better. Uh, so we'll see. Like everything else that we do around here, this will be an experiment. Uh, I would like to do more podcasts. We have a lot to say, um, but just the hard part is if this format becomes like torturously dull, maybe it's not super interesting for the audience. Um, you know, only time will tell with that. <clears throat> so, uh, my topic for the day is professional training versus personal enrichment or should everybody get a trophy regardless of performance? So in our modern world, we've got some people who are very against the concept of everybody getting a trophy. You know, they talk about how youth sports back in the day, only the people who won the championship got the trophy. And, and they're sort of against the, the fact that these days, lots of the kids, maybe all of the kids get a trophy just for participation. And I think that you can make a good argument for both sides. Uh, I think that we need to be able to validate the people who do uh, end up winning the championship. And that's that's one way to approach it. But I also think that it's nice for everybody involved to have their participation recognized. Um, 
But while I think that we should validate both sides, uh, or we should at least examine both sides of that, I want to make sure that the audience understands that I don't think that they're the same thing. So for us, we have, we approach this in two different ways by designing two different types of programs. We definitely have programs that are professional training in nature, and these are standards based with testing protocols and, and really stringent documentation protocols. And I think some people come here looking for those sorts of things. Um, but we also have programs that are for personal enrichment, where people are going to come out and just want to have a new experience, maybe step out of their daily life and uh, just have that new experience. And if you go back and listen to episode number 107, uh, which we're talking about coaching and the two different approaches, the nurturing approach to being a coach versus the accountability part of being a coach. Again, I think that both sides are valid, but I think that they can't coexist in the same space. I think the student needs to decide, hey, what am I trying to get out of this? Um, and for us, the way that we've solved that problem on our long programs is with our certification option. So for the wilderness bushcraft semester, we have what we call our journeyman certification. For the wilderness canoe expedition semester, we have the engagé uh, certification option and for the boreal snowshoe expedition we have the Hevernant uh, certification. So what those certifications are is they are where we will go through and make sure and check the box that the student knows the curriculum. Right, that they are becoming content matter experts, that they can pass tests regarding to the curriculum, and that they know it inside and out. But not every student is interested in, in doing this. You know, some people really just want to come out and go on, say, the Wilderness Canoe Expedition semester um, just to go out and spend four weeks in the woods and, and be living on wild rivers. And that's great. You know, if someone's not interested, say, in, in going the professional training route, that's fine with us. Uh, but if someone is interested in pursuing professional acknowledgement for what they've done on the course, then I feel very strongly that they need to be able to, to replicate the skill set. Uh, some of you who have been out here have heard my gripe uh, a number of years ago. We were on a very remote trip and someone had come on the trip. Um, it was a canoe expedition. We were up in Canada on a remote river with a good deal of white water and the person said uh, when they were wanted to come on the trip, I asked them, hey, do you know what you're doing in the boat in a remote area? And the person kind of laughed it off and said, sure, I'm a level three whitewater instructor with the American Canoe Association. But it turns out when we got there, regardless of them having that cert, uh, they didn't really know what they were doing and they were in way over their head. So... Um, just the idea of having standards-based uh, certifications as professional training um, was really driven home to me on that trip. And, you know, a year later, a similar thing happened with the same organization. The person had the certification, but they really weren't up to par. They, they just, uh, uh, I would say they probably fell through the cracks of their training curriculum, or maybe their training curriculum is, is no good, or they just don't hold people to account. So... Again, I think if you're going just for um, personal enrichment, that's great. But if you want to, you know, go on those harder trips, if you want to be teaching people, leading people, then I think that it's not enough to say, I got a part participation trophy. It's where you need to dial in and really nail it with the skill sets involved. And I think that's why standards matter. So... Ultimately, from the student side, say if a student's coming out here or really taking on any any challenging uh, program, they have to decide, hey, what am I in this for? You know, am I in this because I want to have an experience and I, then I want the instructor to kind of validate that experience? Or am I here to... Uh, Am I here to get professional training? Do I want to be held to account to a, le a standard of excellence and, you know, a level of knowledge? Uh, so there's from the student side. From the instructor side, this all boils down to kind of the instructional design part. So when we're approaching this course, we're looking at it from the perspective of what do we want people to get out of it? What are the approaches that we're going to take uh, are we just trying to keep people entertained and, and let them have a really fun time? Or are we trying to pass on a specific skill set 
where we're going to hold them accountable to to mastery of that skill set. So when we're designing the course, how we approach it is different. The goals that we seek and the outcomes that we seek will be different. And how we manage that program is going to be different. You know, everybody will have on a long course, everybody will have a couple of down days. But is that the time where we, you know, kind of break out the hot chocolate and, and say, it's okay, you know, don't worry about it. You don't need to pull up that hard rapid or, you know, get that extra bow drill fire when the weather's bad? Or is that the time to say, okay, if you really want this cert, if you want that professional acknowledgement, it's time to, it's time to buckle up buttercup and, and work a bit harder. So you don't take both approaches at once. And again, if you go back to episode 107, when we're talking about coaching, um, two things, are you trying to nurture the people on the program? Or are you trying to hold them accountable? Both are super valid. Again, I'm a fan of, of both styles, but I just think that they're not the same thing and we need to, we need to differentiate. Of course, the conflict in this system occurs when it starts to get hard. So I think a lot of people will come to our program thinking, yes, I'm going to go for, say, the journeyman certification or the engage certification. But when they get out here, they realize hey, that's a lot of work and a lot of that work isn't easy. And when you couple that with, say, your body being a little beat up, you're tired, you're exhausted, you're getting some, some recurring injuries, um, things, things get hard. And that's why we, on our professional training programs, we've got about a 35% uh, pass rate for people who will come out and get our uh, in-house certifications. Um, yeah, I guess everybody wants their work appreciated and validated, but you know, standards remain. And an example here in Maine of that approach is it's great to enjoy spending time outside, but if you want to be a professional, you have to go pass a state exam to become a Maine guide. And I think that's a great thing. So, you know, having those set standards that this is the level that you should be able to perform at. Uh, and if people show up for the main guide test and can't perform at that standard, don't get it right, you know, fail something on the oral exam, map and compass or catastrophic scenario. Um, you know, I think that's a good thing because ultimately, I think the reason why a lot of modern people are against the nurturing approach and where everybody gets a trophy is because then maybe you're out somewhere and if things start to get really challenging, they worry that that person isn't up to the task of managing that situation. And I will concur with that. You know, we have a saying around here that we train hard so that life is easy. If you train easy, meaning you don't push yourself and then you get find yourself in a challenge, challenging situation, life can be very hard. But if we design the program from the perspective of this is going to be hard and you're going to have to work really hard to be successful here, the goal or the reason why we do that is so that you should have the tools to overcome any situation after that when you're out in the real world. So uh, again, I don't have any answers or solutions to the controversy of, you know, should everybody get a trophy or should, should it be more... Uh, uh, outcome based where only the winner gets a trophy, right? I'm not trying to say that we have the solution, um, but it's been on my mind and I just wanted to talk about it. So that's all I've got for this morning. Uh, thanks for listening. You have been listening to the Jack Mountain Bushcraft podcast. For more information on our professional wilderness guide training programs that are college accredited and GI Bill approved, visit us on the web at jackmtn.com.